Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about arithmetic. And we're going to, you can do arithmetic with signed numbers, untimed numbers. Um, and the simplest arithmetic is addition, but we've got to look at subtraction as well. Um, now, I'm going to look just at two's complement numbers. I get A for practice uh, with two's complement, but also because it highlights the way that the numbers just sort of work and they're embedded and the sign is an integral part of the number which is one of the advantages of two's complement so let's go straight into it and let's do a simple calculation five plus three one of the great things about these questions when you get them in the exam is you know what the answer is i know the answer is eight we're going to work with five bits we could do it with any number of bits but i'm going to work with five just to keep the number of notes and ones all over the screen simple right so i'm going to put some column ends down and i'm going to write down five as a two's complement number so i start it's positive so i'm going to put a sign bit of zero in there then i'm going to write down five so that's a four and a one and i'm just going to put a note to myself and the examiner that, that i know that's plus five i'm going to write down three so that's a sign bit of zero remember zero means positive then I'm going to write down 3, which is a 2 and a 1. So that's plus 3. And I'm going to add these two together. Whenever you do arithmetic operations, you will get marks for working. You're not using calculators, so you've just got to go through the process. And it's important to write down uh, carries and things like that. So the process is the same as long addition that you would do with deanery numbers. Apart from the fact that we're just dealing with binary. So let's just have a look at how this works. And so we take starting with the least significant bit, the one that represents the units column, we work towards the right hand edge, just taking pairs, just like you would in normal addition. So we say one and one is two. Now in binary, two requires two digits. So it's two is actually one zero. If we was to add in deanery five and seven, we would get 12. So we wouldn't write 12 down, we'd write two, carry one. So we write down the units and then carry the tens. So it's identical in binary. So when we add one and one, we get naught, carry one. Now I write my carries here so that I can easily keep these in line. You might want to put them underneath because that's what you do. If you do that, be careful that you keep the columns together. Okay, so that's first column, let's carry on. So naught, one and one is two, so that's naught, carry one. One, naught and one is two, so that's again, naught, carry one. Naught, naught and one is one, fits. Naught, naught is zero. Okay, so by the time we've finished, we can look at it, we can see it's got a sign which says positive, and then we've got the mag magnitude part of two's complement, the remaining bits we can just read because it's positive we can just read it and that gives us eight which is what we originally had okay let's have a look at another example so that was quite a nice simple one let's do five plus minus three okay so this should be two five plus minus three is two again we're going to do it in five bits so let's write down some column addings let's write down five because we know that one so it's positive and then five is a four and a one so that's plus five but we don't know what minus three is going to look like so let's just do some working out so just write yourself some bits down and we'll write down remember if we want to write down minus three and two's complement and we don't know how to do that we write down the positive version so let's write down positive three and to find out what negative three looks like we do two's complement so we go flip 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 get to the last one write it down as a one so that is now minus three so now that we've worked out what minus three is, we can write it down 
ready for our calculation. So we're going to write 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. That is minus 3. And we're going to add these two together. So again, let's do our neat tram lines. Process identical before. Now you can see, so I'm, I'm adding a negative number here, but the process is the same. We just take the pairs from the least significant bit. Oops, let me just do that there. Can't see from my face. So just take the pairs from the least significant bit, work along, pair at a time, writing down the result and any carries. So we go one and one is not carry one. Not, not, and one is one. One and one is not carry one. Not one and one is two, so that's not carry one. Not one and one is two, so that's not carry one. And I'm going to put that in a box and I'm going to call it carry. And I'll explain why now. Okay, when we're working with a fixed number of bits and we're doing arithmetic, the answer has to stay inside that number of bits. So we're doing five bits. So my answer is this portion here. So when we look at this, ignore this carry thing for a second, we can see here it's two's complement. So we look at this most significant bit and we say, oh, the sign is positive, which means we can just read the rest of the bits. So that was an eight, that's a four, that's a two, that's a one. So this is the number two. That was what our answer was. That's what we predicted the answer was going to be, plus two. So it's correct. But we've got this extra bit. Now, what you find is that when you're doing arithmetic and you add in positive and negative values, you will get these carries occur. It's up to the CPU, the arithmetic and logic unit, to do the arithmetic and to keep track of results like these carries, these rollovers. OK, you tend to find this a lot. If you add a negative and a positive number together, you'll get this like rolling effect, which is what we ended up with there. So it like went carry, 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 and it dropped out. It's not part of the answer. The answer is two, and the answer is correct there. OK, it's not that the number's too big. The answer is correct. We just ended up with this spurious carry. So you can always write that and mark it off. OK. Um, but the answer that you quote is what's stored in the five bits. You don't start adding extra bits on. OK, right. Let's have a look at another problem. We're going to stick with five bits. So let's do let's do uh, 10 plus 12. So the answer for that should be 22. Right, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, our column headings. Right, let's write down 10. So that's a positive number. So that's an 8 and a 2. That's plus 10. Uh, 12, positive number. So that's 8 and 4. And then we're going to add them together. But let's just have a pause. The largest positive number that we can store in two's complement using five bits, and we talked about this in the previous lesson, the largest is going to be one minus the sine bit column. Remember, this is the sine bit column. So the largest in five bit to C is 15 plus 15. OK, these two numbers are fine. 10 is smaller than 15, but 22 is bigger. So we're going to have a problem when we add these two together. So let's just watch that problem. We'll just work it through. So we've got not, not is not. One and not is one. Not and one is one. 1 and 1 is not carry 1. And then we get no, no, and 1 is 1. So that's our final answer. But look at the sign. It is now negative. So we add positive number. 
and a positive number, and we added them together and we got a negative number. Now, this would never happen in normal maths, okay? But on the computer, it happens quite regularly. This is now nonsense, this answer. This is what we call overflow. It doesn't fit. It's too big. 22 is bigger than the largest number I can store in five bits for two's complement. So the number is too large to represent. Now, it's the job of the arithmetic and logic unit, like I said before with this carry that we had on the previous question. It is the arithmetic and logic unit that keeps track of when overflow occurs. So it knows that if it's adding two positive numbers and it ends up with a negative number, it goes oh, overflow and it can indicate this and the programmer can look for this. OK, um, especially when you're doing low level programming. You mustn't say, oh, I just need to use more bits, add more bits, because that doesn't work. All right. You can't just add more bits. The answer is what is there. So you would write that answer down. You may get asked what's happened and you will say, oh, it's overflow. It's too large to represent. And we can prove that it works. So this this is negative. So it's nonsense. It, it, if we was to do two's complement and find out what that number was, it, it wouldn't be 22. OK. But if we added an extra bit and made it a kept made it positive again, and we read this and we say, all right, well, it's positive. Uh, 16 plus 4 is 20 plus 2 is 22. Ah, it works. So if we had more bits or we'd have extended this into a larger number of bits, then the result would have worked. But with the five bits we were working with, this cannot be calculated, this answer. But we don't know it until we do the calculation, which is why it's the responsibility of the arithmetic and logic unit to actually do this work for us. OK, so that's addition. So we've got a couple of things to watch out for. We may get a roll off carry when we're dealing with positive negative numbers, but we stick to the five bits. We may get overflow if the number that we're trying to store is too large. OK, so that's addition. So let's have a look at subtraction. Now, subtraction is an interesting one. It's a separate process to addition. But because we're dealing with tooth complement, we can do subtraction using addition. And let's have a look. So, for instance, if we want to take five and subtract three from it, we know the answer is minus, uh, it's not minus, it's plus two. Okay, five minus three is two. But we can rewrite that. We can say, right, five plus minus three. And that is an equivalent. And that will give us the answer plus two. But instead of having to do a subtraction operation, we're actually replacing it with addition. But we're adding a negative number. So whatever this second number is, we just do two's complement on it. So Whenever I've got anything of this form, so we say A minus B is the same as A plus the two's complement of B. Okay, so two's complement, like we said before, is effectively like multiplying by minus one. It's our friend, and it's a super quick operation that's built into the CPU doing two's complement. Okay, so it doesn't really cost you anything to do this. So let's have a go at doing this. So let's do five plus minus three. Okay, so we're doing five bits again. So one, four, eight, 16. Five is easy to write down because it's positive. So we say one, four, and one, one. That's plus five. But minus three, we don't know what that is. So let's just do some working out over here. So one, two, four, eight, 16. Right, so let's write down positive three. And let's perform two's complement on it. So we've got flip, 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 flip. 
get to the last one, leave it as a one. So that is minus three. So that's what we're going to add. So one, 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 oh, one. And that's minus three. So we're going to add them. So we don't have to actually do a subtraction. So let's just quickly add this up. So we get one and one is not, carry one. Not, not, and one is one. One and one is not, carry one. Not, carry one. Not, carry one. So put the box, arrow, carry. Ignore it because the only bit we're interested in are the five bits that are there. And that is plus two. So whenever we get any subtraction to do, if we've got the subtraction operation, we can rewrite. So let's have a go at another one. So let's do seven minus 12. So seven minus 12, so rewrite as seven plus the two's complement of 12. So we're gonna say minus 12. You can put it in brackets if you want, okay? So it makes it clearer to you, but you don't need to. Okay, so it's seven plus minus 12. So we can do it in five bits. So one, two, four, eight, 16. So we're gonna write down seven, which is a naught, and then it's a four, a two, and a one. So that's seven. We're gonna write down minus 12, but I don't know what minus 12 is. So let's just, just do some working out. So if I don't know what minus 12 is, remember I started with 12, so I'm gonna write down positive 12. So I'm gonna put sine bit of zero, and then I'm gonna write 12, which is an eight and a four. So that's plus 12. You could write all this here, but it can get confusing. So it's nice just to work it out at the side and then plop the minus 12 in when you've worked it. Right, okay, so we're gonna do two's complement to get the negative version of 12. So we go flip, flip, that is flip, flip. I said flip, flip, and then I didn't do it anyway. So flip, flip, that's the last one. So write that down as a one, and then just write down the remaining zeros. So that is minus 12 in two's complement. So let's take that over here, and let's add these two together. So we're gonna add these two numbers. Again, we know what the answer is going to be. So 7 minus 12 should be minus 5, theoretically. And again, with that, it's still minus 5. So when we add these two together, so let's just write down. And the reason I keep writing this thing in brackets is because I'm showing the examiner that I know what I'm doing. Okay, really important that. Right, so we've got 1 and 0 is 1. 1 and 0 is 1. 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 uh, no, no, and one is one. No, and one is one. Right. Examining this number, sine bit, negative. That's what we thought. We thought we were going to get a negative sign. Right. I can't just read it. It's not. If it was sine of magnitude, yes, I could just read it. But it isn't. It's two's complement. So I need to do two's complement to find out what the positive version of this number is. Now I know it's negative, so I'm going to write down minus, and then I'm going to say flip all the bits and add one. So I'm going to go flip, 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 flip. That's the final one. So I'll just leave it as a one. Reading that number now, we've got no 16s, no eights. We've got a four. We've got no two and we've got one. So we've actually got minus five. Hey, hey, that is what we predicted. And that is the real beauty of two's complement. Don't worry about where it comes from, the maths behind it. If you're really interested, you can look up two's complement. But the magic of it is, is that it just works and it allows you to throw away subtraction. So because we haven't got subtraction, it means you can dedicate silicon area to do addition quicker. So you can use quicker methods. You do not have to provide. So two's complement, one of its great benefits, it removes the need for subtraction hardware. Because all you do is you have a complement, a two's complement unit. So if you're doing subtraction, it might look something like this. So you, so when you're doing A minus B, so you have your 
addition unit where the A goes straight in. So the A goes in there. But what the B does, it goes through comp two's complement unit. And that is fed into the ALU. And that's where you get your answer out. So you don't have to provide any additional... Subtraction's a nightmare. It's horrible. It's horrible in normal numbers, so, and it's worse in binary. Borrowing columns and all that. But you don't want to be messing about trying to build that in a logic circuit. You could do it, but you don't want to do it. You don't want to be doing it. Okay? So it removes this need. So that's arithmetic, and that's the reason why we use two's complement. We still use sign and magnitude in, in, for different things. In fact, it's used in... Um, some floating point formats, okay? But it's just long addition. That's all it is.